Good afternoon, my name is Josh from Cyclones Oz and it's about time that we talk about the tropics once again. We have a tropical depression located offshore from the North Queensland coastline. It's considered a rainfall depression, but for all intents and purposes, it is of tropical nature and it is bringing some rainfall and has brought some moderate rainfall to parts of northern Queensland. Not only that, but as we zoom out, we're also looking at the potential for a tropical depression or even tropical cyclone to develop. It will occur well offshore from the Queensland coastline, but it could give Vanuatu and New Caledonia a bit of a scare. We'll also touch on that developing tropical low situation towards the north of the Northern Territory and into West Australian waters as well, but not much is expected to come of that and I don't think there is too much to be worried about at all. So just starting things off on North Queensland, you can see there are a few distinct patches of heavy rainfall right now. Nothing too crazy up here, but we are looking at some moderate falls moving into the Daintree Rainforest and through parts of the North Queensland coast, particularly around Cooktown this afternoon and this evening. It's from this very broad area of low pressure. It's a very, very broad area of low pressure. So we're not talking about tropical cyclone genesis through here, even though there is a little bit of spin to this. But in what we've got, the inflow features through here, a bit of uh, warm, moist air is streaming into the inflow of this system here, and that's bringing some rainfall and shower activity to parts of Queensland's far north. Not only that, but a few thunderstorms are spiking up as well through parts of the Cape York Peninsula. We've also got enhanced convection activity here as those northwesterlies off Indonesia begin to pick up, and that is a distinct sign that, that the monsoon is very sure as soon to arrive through parts of northern Queensland when these northwesterlies pick up through the top end of the Northern Territory and into the Gulf of Carpentaria. So if you're wondering where all of this rainfall is that we've been promising up in North Queensland, don't worry, it's a little bit behind schedule, but it is most certainly on the way. The good thing is it's not coming anytime soon, or at least that's good news for most. It could be bad news for some, but as we have a look at here on the rainfall accumulation forecast, whilst we still have those pretty big turtles through parts of PNG and into the Gulf of Carpentaria, and for extreme northern parts of Queensland along the northern and the western edges of the Cape York Peninsula, the Daintree Rainforest and the Casper coast are still remaining pretty dry all things considered particularly for this time of the year when we do begin to see the monsoon start to develop but this only goes out to the 20th of december and then from that point onwards particularly after the 15th of december but especially between the 20th to the 25th of december there's now some increased signals of heavy rainfall developing across queensland's far north so let's just write that down here so that we remember the 20th to the 25th of december is when we have some increasing signals for rainfall activity through parts of northern and far northern queensland it's still way too early to be talking about how much rainfall is going to be coming through, but I can expect a general uptick in the accumulations that we're seeing right now, which means a broad low pressure system is possible. That may bring 200 millimetres to parts of the Daintree and the Cassidy Coast. It may also bring falls between 50 to 150 millimetres around Townsville, down through the Whit Sundays and around Mackay. It could also result in above average thunderstorm activity through parts of the Cape York Peninsula. Now, this is, of course, looking very long range. And again, we're talking about tropical rainfall here coming from a monsoonal origin, which means it's going to be scattered. It's going to be hit or miss and some locations will pick up big time other locations will also miss out big time so we need to be keeping that in mind as well that this is just a broad outlook and we're talking about a very general widespread uh, uptick or a widespread increase in rainfall accumulations as opposed to a massive dumping rainfall event like a tropical cyclone or a tropical low coming through. So not everyone's going to get it. A lot of people will miss out, but there will be some places that do see that general uptick in rainfall after about the 20th of December. And whether that's going to come from a 150 millimeter day of rainfall or a 300 millimeter week of rainfall, still a little bit too early to be saying it for sure. Now I'm going to keep things on the Coral Sea. Whilst there's nothing expected to happen into the Coral Sea, we are talking about enhanced convection through this part of the Coral Sea out into the Solomon Islands and towards the north of Vanuatu. And that's likely to spit out a tropical low sometime in the next seven days. A tropical cyclone is now a likely possibility around parts of the Pacific Ocean, but the good news is this system should remain well away from the Australian mainland and definitely isn't looking like a Queensland threat at this point in time. You can see here where this system is going to be tracking around the Vanuatu and the New Caledonia area is about two to 3,000 nautical miles away from the closest piece of Australian mainland, about 5,000 kilometres, give or take, so very, very far away indeed and of no significant threat at all to the Australian mainland. But let's talk about the forecast right now because these tropical systems, when they do develop around Vanuatu, they can bring some interesting weather to parts of eastern Australia and they are most certainly worth the mention. So just pushing things forward out to about the 10th of December, you can begin to see enhanced convection and low pressure system activity with our first defined low here developing into the Solomon Sea. And this is going to slowly get its act together through Wednesday, Thursday, Friday and Saturday the 10th to the 13th of December respectively. Now by Friday or at least by next fortnight's weekend on the 14th or the 15th, 
and 5th of December respectively, we're likely to see a fully fledged tropical low or tropical cyclone beginning to develop somewhere in at this black circle here. There's some very solid forecast model congruency as well. If we cross reference this to the GFS, basically same intensity at the same time. Even the ICON forecast model is calling for enhanced convection and tropical activity around the same time as well on the 11th of December. And the axis, which can be pretty unreliable at this time of the year, is also calling for a tropical area of low pressure out here into the Solomon Sea. Now, I've been doing this for quite a while. I know the signals to be looking out for in the Solomon Sea is a pretty predictable place to be looking for tropical cyclone or tropical low activity at this time of the year. When we see four different forecast models calling for a weak tropical low out to a weak tropical cyclone somewhere in this black circle uh, within the same kind of time frame, I can be saying with a high degree of certainty that we are likely to be seeing something out here into the extreme eastern parts of the Coral Sea, but at least somewhere into the Pacific Ocean. Now, this is more likely to be a problem for Vanuatu, the Solomon Islands, and Fiji more so than it is for Australia. And even if it does become a problem for Australia, we're going to have lots and lots of notice ahead of this system here, which is a very unlikely possibility, but still a remote possibility at that. So what this means is there's no need to be panicking, but this is a keep an eye on the situation type forecast. Now, my rule of thumb is if you have a system developing towards the uh, west of this line here, running basically over the top of Vanuatu down to New Caledonia, Norfolk Island, if you see any system developing through here, it's a keep a close eye on the situation type system until it actually develops we know exactly where the system is going to be going. But of course, I don't mean to be making preparations or panicking ahead of this tropical cyclone. It's a feature. It's not a problem or a concern right now. Now, as I zoom out here, I would like to talk about why this is not a concern for the Queensland coastline. What we are going to be talking about is wind shear and steering currents and steering flows. As we head up into the upper levels of the atmosphere, we've got this thing called the jet stream. And everybody's familiar with the term the jet stream. It's those winds that blow across in the subtropical zones at about 20 to 40 degrees south and about 20 to 40 degrees north uh, in an anti-clockwise fashion, I believe. Now, these winds here can reach speeds of 300 kilometers an hour. They're very, very strong indeed, and they are hostile to tropical cyclone development. When we see tropical cyclones in, in uh, interacting with the jet stream, they get sent off every which way. They can be ripped apart. It's really, really, really hostile when we see tropical cyclones going for the jet stream. And have a look at where the jet stream is. It's through the middle of the Coral Sea. That's a very typical December, early January pattern. As the monsoon continues to push in here from the northwest, we see this jet stream slowly sink further towards the south. So as we get out towards January, this jet stream is going to sink to the Brisbane area. But right now we're looking at the jet stream originating over far north Queensland and then moving down through the Coral Sea and moving over the New Caledonia area. And that's why even though we see thunderstorm activity and shower activity begin to build through November, the true monsoonal rainfall for northern Queensland doesn't really arrive until around Christmas time or the first couple of weeks of 2026 or the new year, I should say. But what this means for this system here, all of that goggly gook, is if a tropical load does form and it takes aim for Australia if, not when, if, because it is a very uncertain forecast right now. It's going to be interacting with the jet stream. It's either going to be ripped apart or most likely or more likely still, it's going to be steered off in the direction of the uh, jet stream, which means these winds here, which are going to be coming out of the northwest, will then push this tropical cyclone once it begins interacting with it or coming close to the Australian mainland, pushed out towards the northwest. Now, the only feasible way that a tropical cyclone comes to the Australian coastline at any kind of reasonable intensity is if something was to develop in the Arafura Sea right now. That would then go into the northern parts of the Cape York Peninsula, but that's very unlikely to happen, and that leads me nicely on into the next part of our forecast update, is the interaction of a tropical low or the potential for a tropical low developing in the Arafura Sea and offshore from the West Australian mainland. We may be talking about a weak tropical cyclone or a tropical low developing in the next week or so somewhere in this area here. However, the Bureau of Meteorology have actually highlighted a 10% chance of tropical cyclone genesis here. Now, the Bureau of Meteorology have a wide array of tools to be making their forecasts, but I can't seem to wrap my head around why they've made this one here. It's very unlikely we see tropical cyclone development in the Joseph Bonaparte Gulf or the Arafura or Timor Seas sometime in the next seven days or so. Very, very unlikely indeed. In fact, tropical cyclone phenol was a slam dunk forecast in comparison to this week knew how difficult tropical cyclone FINA was to forecast. But let's just have a look at the forecast modeling nonetheless. The AXIS forecast model, which is the Bureau of Meteorology's own in-house forecast model, is suggesting the development of a weak low pressure system sometime around Wednesday. You can see that here kind of spinning itself up uh, somewhere around the island of Timor. It, it'd be a bit of an interesting one. It's a possibility at this point in time, but I don't really put too much weight behind it. Now, the likely track that this system is going to be taking, considering the Bureau of Meteorology originated in about six days' time here and then 
push the tropical low out into the West Australian waters and the Indian Ocean makes me to believe that this system here is then going to be our kind of 10 day range system that's going to develop south of uh, Java uh, uh, on Indonesia around the Christmas Island area because that's another thing that we've got on the forecast is around the 13th of December, another tropical area of low pressure developing here around Christmas Island. What I believe this is, is the Bureau of Energy pre-empting the development of a tropical low that's then going to track out into the Indian Ocean and then become or actually become a tropical low here towards the south of uh, Java and then head out properly into the Indian Ocean where it will then eventually meet its demise due to dry air and high wind shear. But you can see none of these tracks that I've just highlighted take this system anywhere near the Australian mainland. Its closest approach is when it's going to be a bunch of thunderstorms, a cluster of convective activity towards the north of the Tiwi Islands. So really not a concern either. It may bump up rainfall accumulation style. I mean, if we have a look at our convective forecast modeling here again from the access forecast model or our general forecast modeling here, I should say, uh, from the ECM. If you can see that we're looking at above average rainfall accumulations and another uptick in rainfall through parts of the top end of the Northern Territory and also the northern parts of the Kimberley region and parts of the Pilbara region and towards Western Australia. When we do see tropical lows track adjacent to the West Australian and uh, Northern Territory coastline, we see what we uh, we see low pressure troughs developing along the coastline, extending out from these areas of tropical low pressure. That's why we get such warm days when tropical cyclones develop in the southwest of Western Australia, down where I'm from in Perth. Uh, generally speaking, when we've got a tropical low developing, we can pretty much fully book in a 40 degree day. But these troughs will also spark thunderstorm activity through parts of the Kimberley region and the Northern Territory. And a relentless three or four day outbreak is now a possibility of pulse thunderstorms up into this part of Western Australia and the NT. So that will be another feature to watch for the locals up there. They may be talking about a significant uptick in rainfall and uh, thunderstorm activity. Now the GFS forecast model, which is generally the most bullish with outlooks like this, is not really calling for anything in the way of tropical low or tropical cyclone activity. And neither is any major or any other major forecast model. We kind of just all expect this weak area of low pressure to briefly develop on the 13th out to about the 16th of December, and then to move out towards the Cocos Keeling Islands and eventually cark it out there. I really don't think this is going to be a problem dog type system. And there's nothing on the long range forecast modeling as well that's suggesting that this is going to make a U-turn and head back towards Western Australia. Again, we're talking about Christmas time if that does happen. And that's very, very long range indeed. And it's impossible to make a reliable forecast that far out. So a feature that I'm going to be watching quite closely, but not a feature that I'm going to be putting too much time and effort into, if that makes sense, because it isn't that much of a concern at this point in time. But apart from that, it is starting to warm up along the tropics. I mean, we're seeing more thunderstorm activity. I'm recording this in the afternoon. You can already see thunderstorm activity, including famous Hector on the Tiwi Islands, is bubbling away quite nicely. Lots of thunderstorm activity through parts of the Northern Territory. Pockets of Queensland seeing that thunderstorm activity as well. However, for the southeast, it is cool, calm, and collected. But that is expected to break as we get out towards this weekend. So I'm going to keep close tabs on that as well. But for now, we don't have anything that's worth watching, not at least for the next week or so. I'm going to continue to keep a back uh, or a close monitoring on this situation here and keep it kind of on the back burner for a couple more days. And I'll have the regular update every three or four days on these systems out the Coral Sea as well, considering that they could at, at some point in time affect some of the uh, weather patterns that we are going to see around Australia. But that is going to do it for today's weather forecast updates. If you have enjoyed them, please do consider subscribing and also leave a like on the video while you're at it as well. A massive thank you to the channel sponsors. Their names are on screen right now. I could not run the show without them and their support is, as always, massively appreciated as well. Leave me some feedback in the comment section down below as well. I'm working on the audio situation, so please don't come up my throat for that. It's been a bit of a hectic week here. It's been a very hectic day as well, but I'm hoping to get it sorted out this weekend. But that's going to be all for me today, and I'll catch you all the next storm. Goodbye.